There's a fight between Joni no. and Helen last night. She's no. pulling her away. No, let me see. Let me see. Oh. Okay, hey, you know what? We're going to hash up the bill on the way to the stage. Yeah. Dr. Phil, we have to show you something. Okay. Okay. Apparently, two guests, Joni and Helen, got into a fight because Helen put drinks on her credit card she couldn't pay for after getting some dinner, and she expected Joni to pay for it. That's right there. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. My mom is addicted to painkillers. She throws herself down the stairs so she can get pain pills. Oh, absolutely. You don't understand the daily pain. You're not there. A desperate family. You yanked a hair off her head in anger. A startling intervention. You made 25 sandwiches out of tomatoes and A1 sauce. I don't remember that. You're going to get soda for the children. You poured it in their shoes. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. Over here, my producers told me about a situation that happened at the hotel last night. Now, apparently, my main guest today, Helen, who claims she is not drug addicted, but just needs pain relief, ran up a tab at the hotel bar, leaving her sister, Joni, stuck paying the bill. Well, she was not happy about it, so Joni pulled her sister, Helen's wig in anger. This whole situation is just out of control with these family members pointing fingers at each other and not focusing on the problem, which is a 52-year-old woman who I believe is on death's door. Now, Helen's son, Nate, says he cannot believe his mother, Helen, is still denying being hooked on prescription pills while looking this incoherent. My mom is highly addicted to painkillers and it's going to kill her. <laughs> man right now my mother-in-law is so high on pain medication that when i'm talking to her i don't feel like she really understands what i'm even saying she seems like she's in la la land i've known nathan and his family my entire life helen was very functional she was on top of her game about 15 years ago when i was in middle school my mom had gastric bypass surgery since my mom's surgery pain pills have been part of her life things started falling apart quickly she lost her job she lost her house the house was a free-for-all helen just really didn't care when I was in high school, my mom took me to school in the morning, and she drove over curbs and into the yard at the high school, and, and I quickly realized that she was high. I remember one time, Helen almost got hit by a car because someone was trying to steal her pain medication. I moved out at 15. Enough was enough. I went away to college. I started my career for about eight to 10 years. I had very little contact with my mom and my sister. I just didn't want to get caught up in the drama. About five years ago, I reconnected with my mom. She was a mess. She was in a bad spot. My mom would do anything to get pain medication. I didn't take any out of them yesterday. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. She will go out on the streets and find anyone that has pills. My mom has been known to be jumping from pain doctor to pain doctor, from hospitals to hospitals to get what she wants. Can't get very much privacy in a hospital. Last time my mom was in the hospital, the doctors put her on a morphine drip. I truly believe that she has hurt herself, fallen downstairs on purpose and done things on purpose to have to go to the hospital to get something. My mom thinks that she's dying from complications from her gastric bypass, but she's dying from the painkillers and the drugs. That's what's killing her. If we don't give my mom off pain medication immediately, I know my fear and I know that my mom won't be dead. You wrote in, correct? Yes, me and my wife did. Why now? Because um, uh, one of our family members was struck by a car and we were at the hospital to be there for him, and my right. mom showed up very high. Um, and it's probably one of the worst times I've ever seen her. What does she say about it when you talk to her about it? <clears throat> you know, she denies it. She, she blames everything on her medical conditions and that she's in pain, and it's a medical problem. It's the doctors that is the reason why she's not the mom she used to be. Have you just called her out on it? Have you refused to 
support her in any way in getting these drugs, doing these things? Yes, I've done that my whole life. Um, when I moved out 15, I separated myself from my family completely. Um, I just couldn't take, take to um, accept those behaviors. You say your sisters, Alex and Demetria, are not doing enough to get your mom the help to get off these pills. My sister Alex was supporting me 100% at that time. Demetria was not. Demetria was being nasty to us, telling my mom she didn't, know, she didn't need to go to rehab. She didn't, she didn't need to do the things that I said that she needs to do. Did you realize that she is actually harming herself so she can get pain pills. In 2010, she throws herself down the stairs so she has injuries so she can present herself to an ER. In 2011, she started befriending addicts at AA mm -hmm. to get pills. Mm -hmm. 2011 through 2016, uh, she's in the hospital a lot, so she's getting them that way, 20 to 30 times a year. Could be more. She stole $40 from you, mm -hmm. which she's using to buy pills. Yep, that's not my mom. My, my mom taught me, none of these pictures in here, my mom taught me a lot. But you see her wasting away. Yeah. Does that hurt you? <clears throat> yeah. My, my mom was a hardworking woman. I remember seeing her get up every morning early, get, get dressed, professional, look good, ready to go. She took care of an addict for years. She took, took care of an addict for a long time. And then when she left him finally, because us kids were just, were just gone, she turned her page in her life and thought that she was, that she could go out and stuff and have a good time and she just lost it, man. And then she had a gastric bypass because she wanted to lose weight and be a 25 again. And she tried to live that life and she, she lost it. Mm -hmm. And I lost my mom since that day. Eventually she's gonna come out here today and I need to know what my resources are. Are you willing to stand your ground and do what it takes to get her to turn this firm. corner? Firm, firm. Because she is I'm a master moving. at deflection and you can't take the bait. It won't happen. All right, well, Nate's sisters, Alex and Demetri, are here and they're gonna explain why they agree their mom needs help, but they're offended by their brother's approach. I wanna know why, and later, uh, we're going to meet their mom, Helen, who insists she is not a drug addict. We'll be right back. My mom, she's an addict, and she has been for the last 15 years. Now Nathan wants to come in and save the day. You can't just walk in here and be kept in America when you don't even know the whole history. Monday. My mother thinks that she's in a relationship with Vladimir Putin. I love him. He is going to take me home to Russia. You're saying he's in love with me. Why hasn't he gotten you? Her family believes she's delusional. It's disturbing. I miss my mom. I am still your mother. She believes she's the mother of Russia. Vladimir communicates with me through his ties. This guy's the most powerful guy in the world. Why is he talking to you through his tie? That's Monday, then on Tuesday. How many seconds do we have left? You got fired for falling asleep on the yeah. lifeguard stand. Yeah, I did. You ought to have the world on a string. And instead, you got a smart mouth and a lazy ass. New Dr. Phil Tuesday. I've always had a real rocky relationship with my sisters, Alex and Demetra. And Alex is very hard-headed, and Demetra's very passive. When it comes to Nathan's sisters, I don't feel like I can rely on either one of them. Alex was supposed to be a bridesmaid in my wedding, and her husband was the best man in my wedding, and um, we got in a disagreement, and they just didn't show up. When she didn't show up to the wedding, that really did damage to both my relationship with her and Nathan's relationship with her. My sisters aren't very good at handling tough situations, tough conversations. Well, Nate said he always knew his mom was a bit off, but was shocked to return to his hometown four years ago to find his 52-year-old mother, Helen, looking like a frail, old woman. Now, Nate's sisters, Alex and Dimitri, agree their mother is in trouble, but they claim Nate does not have all the facts. My mom is deteriorating right in front of my eyes. It's horrible. She looks like the stuff you see going viral on YouTube when heroin addicts are like passing out. The honest truth is that she's an addict and she has been for the last 15 years. If I confront my mom about it, she tells me to shut up. I couldn't let her be around my kids because she was high on pain medicine all the time. One night she was pouring soda into my kids' shoes and thinking that she was pouring it into cups. And then my oldest asked, what are you doing? She didn't even recognize like who she was dealing with. 
One time, my mom took my kids to the store. She fell asleep at the wheel. And she crashed the car. There was gasoline leaking from the car. She could have killed them all. I and some other family members wanted my mom to go to a nursing home. I felt like she was already dying, so I wanted her to be where she wanted to be. I don't know what the ultimate decision that needs to be made. I just know we can't keep going like this. If you ask my brother Nathan, he knows what she needs to be doing. Nathan is arrogant and hard to deal with at times. For 10 years, Nathan wanted nothing to do with her addiction or her illnesses. Now Nathan wants to come in and save the day and save his mom. He desperately wants to get the family back together. He has this image of us 15 years ago before my, my mom got addicted and thinks that we can get back there. You can't just walk in here and be Captain America when you don't even know the whole history. I'm wondering what the agenda is here. Um, you guys seem to have some angst about him going away while you guys are there fighting the day-to-day -day in the trenches battle. And it's like the prodigal son returns and takes a completely different approach when he's been gone for six years. What are your feelings about that? The only thing that Nathan and I agree on is the help that my mom needs. That's the only thing we agree on. To say that myself or my sister like have allowed this condition is insane. My issue with Nathan is like, he's never been there to be supportive for me. I have seven kids and when I call him, Nathan, can you do the hospital run this time? Mom's in the hospital, can you come? No. No, I can't do this. I have to work in the morning. Can you pick mom up? Can you do this? No, I can't do it. And I'm not meaning to attack him, but this is just the honest truth. It hurts, because it's like, you can't sit here and say that I've allowed mom's condition. Like, that's insane. I want to make sure it's clear. I never said that Alex allowed these conditions or Demetra allowed the conditions. Demetra was closer, was talking to my mom every day, and my grandparents every day, and my Aunt Joni every day, because she lives closer than the kids. She gets more help from them. So. It, she wasn't bringing the solution to the table that worked because there were too many emotions, uh, emotions involved. When it comes to Alex, Alex supported me getting my mom to rehab and so forth. When I came in like Captain America, I came in because the solution needed to be a tough one and nobody else would do it. You say, and I quote, he's an ass and a hypocrite. What, what do you mean? Nathan, he's never really been family oriented at all. And he's very hard to talk to. Um, the nursing home thing that he's talking about, Yes, I agreed. I said, okay, mom, this is the deal. You don't want to go to the medical university they wanted them to go to? So that, that's fine. Don't go. Go to the nursing home, let them... And she got kicked Hold out for on. a second time. No. She was taking drugs into that nurse. She treats nursing homes like a hotel. Let me explain this. Because a nursing home gives her prescriptions on a timeline. Okay, let and me then, finish. And no, then, let me finish. And then let she gets, no, well, hold on. No. Then she gets let pills. She gets pills from the street so and he, she puts no. them in between those. No, it's a so nurse, he, anyways, it's a hotel. so she went to the nursing home and every time she would leave the nursing home, they would send her meds. I didn't know this until what, my son that. my son was in an incident and they... It's bigger than that. And then, hold on, and then she OD'd and she had to get Narcan from the hospital. The nursing home told, told us that they wouldn't take her. Take so, her. so let me, I want to put one piece in there. So I told, she, no, she I told her that, I told her that if she did not do, if this didn't work at the nursing home, then she would have to do it Look, the hard way. you missed way. the piece in there. When she came there to see him, and Joni stopped, and before she came here, Joni stopped at a drug dealer's I house. I didn't know that. I'm, I'm explaining, because I did my research, I did a lot of investigation. She stopped at this house, and I spoke to these people at the house. Mom stopped there to get more pills. And I asked Aunt Joni about it, and she admitted she stopped there, but Aunt Joni told me, oh, your mom was just selling her bracelet. Selling jewelry. Selling her bracelet. When she was high at the hospital, she overdosed. It's whatever she got from <clears> the house. Okay, if I may, if your mother was watching this, and she's not, but if she was watching this, she would be doing the happy dance back in the green room because she would be saying, yes. They're they are arguing. so off point. They are fighting with each other, and when they're fighting with each other, they ain't talking about me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I can get them divided and conquered, I'm going to skate this bitch like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, and she, she's done that our whole life. That is exactly, like what, they're, like that's exactly what she would be thinking. Because Amen. let me tell you, this may be a whole other conversation, and I'm happy to have it with you on another day. <laughs> but we're either here to talk about family dynamics and who said what to who, or we're here to save your mother's life, not both. <laughs> we have to put these differences aside. The house is on fire. This is not the time to debate how it got on fire. This is the time to put the fire out. Everybody has to be in the bucket brigade. You cannot be fighting amongst yourselves. And if you do, I'd rather you not be here at all.
Uh, Nate insists he is the only one in the family determined to get his mother clean. He even holds his 62-year-old Aunt Joni accountable for being part of the problem. Maybe she is. And if she is, then she doesn't need to be out here. But we're going to find out next because I'm going to talk to her. We'll be right back. With Helen, I don't trust her in my house. She's taken medications out of containers from my family members. Honestly, some days I'd like to punch her. Nathan thinks he has all the answers. Nathan can be very bossy. My aunt is a superhero. She's always been there for us. In my eyes, my Aunt Joni is the complete enabler. She takes my mom to different houses. I call them drug houses. My mom's going to buy narcotics. I don't think my Aunt Joni is enabling her. What Aunt Joni will do is move around pain pills from different family members to make sure that they're all being fed. Nate says he is frustrated with his family's lack of support in helping their mother, Helen, stop abusing opioids. He also points a finger at his Aunt Joni, who he believes is enabling their mother's addiction. Take a look at this. I'm concerned for Helen because I want her to have a long life. At the moment, her medications are kept in a lockbox. They're only given to her at prescribed times. She crushes the pills and liquefies them, and that's what she's supposed to do. The problem is she takes the morphine and then she'll take something else. Then she's kind of stupid for a while. With Helen, I don't trust her in my house. She's taken medications out of containers from my family members. One time, Helen said that she had pancreatic cancer. People gave her money so that she could take care of what she needed. It was an absolute big, fat lie. You want me to help you off that chair? Leave me alone. Honestly, some days I'd like to punch her. Nathan thinks he can fix everything, but he can't always, and sometimes he's her. If you want to say that I'm an enabler, well, maybe I am, but I'm the person that's there all the time. When it comes to Nathan, he thinks he has all the answers. Nathan can be. I won't forget this Why do I regret this? In my mind reckless Thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless Anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless Betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open I hate being broken I feel like an ocean Filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion Rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking Reopen The scars have awoken I can't move on Till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home 
need to be strong every breath of Cause I can't move on till I let go very bossy. He thinks if he slams his hand on the table and says, we're going to fix this thing, it's just going to happen like magic. Do you enable this woman? I don't give her drugs. I don't say, here you go, Helen, go get high. You don't have to do that. If she asks me to take her someplace, I take her. You said that you actually believe when she says she has these illnesses. I've never been told otherwise. You can't tell me that a woman that goes to the hospital 20 or 30 times a year, throws herself down the stairs, that it doesn't occur to you that she's manipulative. I can no, I no, no, can no, I no, 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 you can't. <laughs> I'm talking to you and I'm trying I to know. get, I haven't gotten a straight answer out of you yet. Okay, I get a phone call, Helen needs to go to the hospital, I just go and pick her up and take her. If I get a phone call and she needs to go get her hair, her nails done, I take her to get them done. Two. And she says, oh, I sold some jewelry to this woman, I need to go pick up my money. That's where you think I took her to get drugs. And I didn't know that. You know the house. You know I the don't. people in there. It's an apartment building. What okay. do I know? Okay, listen, if I need your help, I know right where you are, and I'm gonna come <laughs> right to you. Are you telling me you don't know that when she's pawning jewelry and you're taking her to a drug house, you don't know that that's a drug house and you don't know she's getting drugs. And if you don't know, that's okay, tell me. Because if you're that naive, then I'm gonna excuse you from this and I'm gonna let you off the hook here because I can't have you here if you're gonna buy her But understand, I didn't take her to a drug house. I took her to a high-rise apartment building for senior citizens. She said she sold jewelry that she made. How could you not know? How would I know that somebody in, this, in the high-rise senior citizens apartment building was selling drugs? Because she's a deeply entrenched addict and she has one agenda in her life and that is to get to the next high. Okay, but it doesn't look like a drug house. Quite honestly, I... I I've never well, heard of that. You were yet. frustrated enough with her last night that you yanked the hair off her head. Yeah, I was. She spent my car payment money. On? Liquor. Both I nights. told her the night before, Both you nights can't today. drink. They're, you're, they're not going to pay for this. You don't have the money to pay for it, and I'm not going to pay for it. Well, guess what? I paid for it. Because the, what, there's no choice. What do you mean there's no choice? What, I could let her go to jail. There you go. What is, what is my message? What are, you, what are you hearing me say? Stop letting her do things. Stop I, enabling her is what he's saying. I get that. 
I get that. So you I, just say you do enable okay, her. Okay, but when I got there last night, they wouldn't. They weren't going to let her go until somebody paid the bill. So I paid the bill. <clears throat> and Johnny, we talked about this. You're her sister. They're, I know. You have enabled her, and you admitted to it. Just say it. Okay. It's okay. All right. <clears throat> so you I enable I, her. All right. I enable her. Okay. If you do things that make it possible for her to continue on this drug course, you're helping her kill herself. She's committing suicide. Mm -hmm. Slowly and surely. She's going to have to get off of these pain pills. That's going to require medical supervision. I know that. It's not, it's not your job to titrate her off of these things. It's not your job to decide what's legitimate and what's not. It's your job to say, I'm not going to be part of your drug behavior. That's all you got to do is say no. I got it. Okay. Helen has told our producers she is here today to get help for her medical issues, and she is not drug addicted. Well, we all on board here? We're locked yes. in. Yes. We're going to meet Mom next. I have a chronic illness, and it's killing me. You might ever get rid of the also. The pain why pills are killing you. And I tell people that I'm in constant pain. Quite often, they don't believe me. You don't understand. My, my you don't understand the daily yes, regimen of pain that I go through. Mom, yes, no, I do. you don't. Yes, I do. You're not there. When my mom is on pain medication, she is a walking zombie. Once my mom accused me of stealing her pain medication and her caseworker called me and believed my mom, threatened me of calling the sheriff, which would, which would ruin my career. A few months ago, a family member was hit by a car um, and was in the hospital in ICU, and we all rushed to the hospital. My mom came to the hospital. She was completely high to where she couldn't stand up. She had food all over her. Eyes were rolled in the back of her head. She was high as a kite. When I took her back to the nursing home, they refused to accept her. They made my aunt take her to the emergency room where they had to administer Narcan because she had actually overdosed herself. Every time my phone rings, I fear that I'm getting a phone call saying that my mom has passed away. Well, we're talking to siblings Nate, Demetra, and Alex. They all agree on one thing. They haven't had the most solid foundation growing up. This may be the reason why they're having a difficult time now agreeing on how to support each other and their mom. Uh, now, Helen has an opioid addiction issue. Take a look at mom. I believe without pain medication, I wouldn't be here anymore. I can't go without pain medicine until I have the surgery. No, I can't. I have a necrotic ulcer. I can't eat. I can't walk very good. I'm weak all the time. I have a chronic illness and it's killing me. We need to get you off the pain pills and take care of the ulcer. And we will take care of the ulcer and then I will get off the pain pills. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. not a doctor, you but don't, I don't think know. you might ever get rid of the ulcer. The pain while pills are killing you. When I tell people that I'm in constant pain, quite often they don't believe me. You, you don't understand. My, my you don't understand the daily yes, regimen do. of pain that I go through. Mom, yes, no, I do. you don't. Yes, I do. You're not there. I have pain in my abdomen and my back, my left leg. The person that I blame for all this are the doctors that have passed me around from one to another without any one of them really trying to find out what was wrong. You know, there's some good, really good doctors, but, you know, they're just not going down the right road. I don't take the pain medication to get high. It just gives me some relief. Actually, it kind of gives me some energy. I have a dependency, but I'm not an addict in the street that does anything to get drugs. So Alex, I am sick. We know that you're sick, but Mom. you don't Okay, but when you don't I, high. I, I'm not trying to be high. Okay, do, do you abuse your pain medicine? And I have occasionally, yes. You do yes. all the time, right? No, I so don't all the time. Anybody that I don't all the time. pain medicine. And the Mom, only time I do honest. that, and the only time that, that that happens is when I am in an intolerable amount of pain. I feel I've put my family through a lot, but what they need to understand is that I'm in a lot of pain constantly, and I need some help. I am trying to get better. Believe me, it is a feat every day. I hope Dr. Phil could snap his fingers and make all the bad go away. Hey. 
are you doing today? Mm, I'm struggling. What are you struggling with? Um, I ran out of my pain medicine and I'm just sick. Are you in withdrawal? Yeah. Uh-huh. And when was the last time you took a pain med? Yesterday. Today? No, two I didn't. Two o'clock this morning, four o'clock this I, morning? I didn't take an opioid today. It's okay, not it was that the same pain pill. Medicine. It was tramadol. You came in there and said you needed it. Yes, you I did. You kept us up all night. Ringing our doorbell to get paid. I'm sorry. How long have you been on opioids? Five or six years. Right. You, you understand opioids are not designed for long-term use, right? Yeah. Um, if I don't take pain medicine, then, I mean, sometimes the pain is so unimaginable. This is an auto-exacerbating syndrome. The more you take, the sicker you get, the sicker you get, the more you take, the more you take, the sicker you get, the sicker you get, the more you take, the more you take, the sicker you get. And so... He's down for it. And... That's a lie, Helen. You fell asleep at the wheel. You when? had you had two kids in the car with you. She oh, you fell yeah, yeah. I went, forgot about yeah. that one. Oh, I remember. there's that, that time. Time. Yeah, yeah, that one. I remember. I, I remember now. Well, let's look at some behaviors going back further than five years, actually. Um, in 96, you pulled your hair out, lied, and said you had cancer. And I thought I did. Yeah. So why'd you pull your hair out? I didn't pull my hair out. You did. Yeah. You said you were going to chemo, and to prove that you were going to chemo, you pulled your hair out. I, and when I you didn't. told me who your doctor was, I called that doctor's office, and they said, well, I don't know who that is. I... I don't lie. Okay, I'm here. not lying. Okay, don't, here, I, talk to me. Talk I, to me. Talk I, to me. Talk to me. I thought you thought you were going to that doctor. Yes, and I thought I I thought I had cancer. And you pulled your hair out so you looked like you were in chemotherapy. No, I, my hair was falling out. But you weren't in chemo. No, I wasn't. Why was your hair falling out? I, because I was sick, I and my hair is, you know, very. You, you thin. just were sick, and your hair started falling. I hate it when that happens. Yeah. I must feel like. <laughs> <laughs> if you believe what you're telling me, then you're in worse trouble than I thought. Okay, in 08, you were making sandwiches for the children. You made 25 sandwiches out of tomatoes and A1 sauce. I don't, I don't remember that. You OD'd while babysitting Alex's kids. Then you're going to get soda for the children. You poured it in their shoes. I don't remember that. Or anything. Mm. Mom, that happened not even two years ago. It's why I made you move out of my house. I, n no, I yeah. don't remember okay, that. The fact that you don't remember that, that you were that absent, does that tell you that you're out of control of yeah, these narcotics? Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely have issues. And You don't have issues. You are a drug addict. And I, I'm not an addict like that. I am addicted to pain medicine. Addicted. A, addicted. addicted. Yeah. Addict. And I mean, you if you want to call, I'm addicted to the pain medicine. Then you're you a know, drug addict. It. Okay. And you know what I believe? I believe that you started taking these pills for a legitimate reason. But what people didn't know about opioids is if you fill that prescription one time, your chance of being addicted at the one-year mark is 12.5%. If you fill that prescription at the 30-day mark, your chance of being addicted at one year is 33%. That's horrible. You got caught up in the opioid addiction. Yeah. And, and once it gets a grip on you, it's terrible. Yes, it is. And you have been victimized by this. Yes. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you are in a chemical straitjacket that is robbing you of your life and your family. Yep. And I don't intend to let that continue to happen. Okay, that's what I'm hoping. We'll be right back. <laughs> Well, Helen has joined us, and she has gone from healthy to, in my opinion, barely hanging on. 
I want to introduce someone now that is very important to this conversation. This is Dr. Gerald Sachs. Dr. Sachs is the Director of Pain Management at the Pain Institute of Santa Monica. He completed a fellowship in pain management at Harvard Medical School. Suffice it to say, he is the expert, and I have asked him to come here for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sachs, you and I have talked about this. She's been on these opioids, not just using them, but abusing them for years mm -hmm. now. What's the impact of that on, on her body? This is very, very common. We're in the middle, as you and I have spoken, of a uh, national opioid crisis in this country. It's amazing to me, watching all this information today, that there's actually legitimate physicians willing to prescribe opioids for you. Because to be perfectly honest, you're not a patient that should be taking opioids at all. And taking them long term, it can actually create pain perceptions in unrelated areas of the body, correct? That's correct. I mean, right now you, you perceive the pain is in your abdomen, but also you were describing pain in different areas. I know that you've had multiple surgical procedures and obviously have scar tissue, and all of those issues can and, and should be addressed by a pain management specialist, but you have to get the addiction um, solved first. Let's do a hypothetical, doctor. Let's assume that nothing changes. This is all much ado about nothing. <laughs> she just goes home continues down the same path that she is right now. Where is this headed? Unfortunately, it's, it's headed in a horrible area. Pain is subjective. We were taught 20, 30 years ago that whatever the patient told us, that was what the pain is. And unfortunately, that helped to create a situation where patients complain of pain, and then we as healthcare professionals feel that we need to address it and treat it. Well, we do, but not with opioids in this particular case. What do you think about what Dr. Sachs is telling you? It's scary. Mm -hmm. I don't like being like this. This is not fun. You know, this is not a game. And I would love to be off the pain medicine and not have to worry about it. It's horrible. And the fear of getting back in pain is horrible. Well, I've got a really hard question for you. And... It really involves the catch-22 that you find yourself in. There are very few times in our life that we make life or death decisions, but you're gonna have one to make. <laughs> Alex, in short, do you believe that if your mother continues on this path, she will die soon? Absolutely. I want her to get better. I want her to get off the pain pills. Demetra, what do you think? In my eyes, my mom's already dead. Like she's a walking zombie. I don't have my mom. And you miss her. If you don't get help, we're gonna bury you. We're gonna bury you. You understand? Yes. You're gonna be gone. And, and I'll have to tell people why I didn't do more to get you help to keep you alive. I don't want that for you. I need you to, I need <laughs> I don't you to want, get better. I don't want my kids to feel like that. The catch-22 that I said, the decision you have to make is, if she gives this up, it's like walking into hell for her because of the pain that sits on the other side, the withdrawal, the sickness, the... All, it's, it's like flu on steroids times 10. But what I'm telling you is there is help for this. I want to introduce someone, and this is Dr. John Caldwell. He is the Chief Medical Director for Meadows Behavioral Health Center. And the Meadows specializes in treating opioid abuse, pain and trauma, along with the co-occurring disorders, specifically in older adults. This is located in a really peaceful, natural setting in Wickenburg, Arizona. You can help her, correct? Yes, we can help you. And addiction ultimately is a family disorder. We can help with that piece as well. We'll be able to provide you with the medical supervision and care that you need to be able to move through the process of coming off the opiates and then help you with the tools that you need to be able to manage life without opiates. And there's hope in that. And the key here is medical supervision so you can get back to being who you are. I'm offering you this help. Will you take it? Yes, I will. All right. Yeah.
So I want to thank all of my guests today, including Dr. Gerald Sachs, Director of Pain Management at the Pain Institute of Santa Monica, and a special thanks to Dr. John Caldwell, the Chief Medical Director from Meadows Behavioral Health Center. Judy wrote to me on this post, your care and concern for people is genuine and very evident each and every time you sit and talk to someone. That's why I think that he, she's talking about BAM, reached out to you. I know that you guys write and post things on my social media. I do pay attention to it. It also gives me direction about what we need to talk about up here. That's all for today. We'll see you next time.